Good morning and welcome to Tuesday, the 31st of May 2022, to join with me, Reverend Andrew, for this recorded service of morning prayer. Our readings today are Psalm 85 and part of St. Mark's Gospel, Chapter 3. As usual, both these readings will appear screen share through the course of this recording. So we turn to morning prayer. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Creator God, to you be praise and glory forever. As your Spirit moved over the face of the waters, bringing light and life to your creation, pour out your Spirit on us today, that we may walk as children of light, and by your grace reveal your presence. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. Psalm 85, and the response is, Show us your mercy, O Lord. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Lord, you are gracious to your land. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the offense of your people and covered all their sins. You laid aside all your fury and turned from your wrathful indignation. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Restore us again, O God, our Saviour, and let your anger cease from us. Will you be displeased with us forever? Will you stretch out your wrath from one generation to another? Will you not give us life again, that your people may rejoice in you? Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Show us your mercy, O Lord. I will listen to what the Lord God will say. For he shall speak peace to his people and to the faithful, that they turn not again to folly. Truly, his salvation is near to those who fear him, that his glory may dwell in our land. Show us your mercy, O Lord. Mercy and truth are met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth and righteousness look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed give all that is good, and our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and direct his steps in the way. Show us your mercy, O Lord. A prayer. Most holy God, when we come to you fearing that truth condemns us, show us that truth is one with love in your word made flesh our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our reading today is from St. Mark's Gospel, chapter 3, verses 31 to 35. Then his mother, that's the mother of Jesus, and his brothers came. And standing outside, they sent to him and called him. A crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers and sisters are outside asking for you. And Jesus replied, Who are my mothers and my, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking at those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God is my brother and sister and mother. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today the church marks this um, day as uh, the visitation of Elizabeth to Mary and hence we have a, quite a bit of a family feel uh, in the readings, as particularly so in the uh, gospel reading, the New Testament reading we've just heard, with Jesus speaking with uh, his followers uh, with his mother and brother and sisters standing outside and really quite uh, um, concerned for him. If you read a few verses back, you will see that uh, they really are deeply concerned for him, partly because his ministry had taken off such a huge success and they were concerned for his well-being and welfare, just as any good mother, of course, would do. And that Jesus calls his people there around him, his mother and his brothers and his sisters. Well, that reminds us that in the Christian faith, we are all brothers and sisters to one another. 
brother, brother, of course, to our Lord Jesus Christ himself, could look upon him as our older brother. And it's that type of relationship that we're called to apply and live and develop and explore and mature in the Christian faith. So that was one trying to say is that when we're in the Christian faith, we have that relationship with one of that warm, personal, deep relationship, one with another, as indeed we have with Jesus Christ himself. So let's be reminded today that as we go about the course of our lives, that we have that uh, loving, warm family membership of our local church, which is designed to be exactly that, uh, that, that warm, loving, intimate, deeply personal relationship that we have with Almighty God, with his son, Jesus Christ, and with one another. Reminding ourselves of the uh, extent of the brotherly love that our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us by going to the cross, dying for us, freeing us from all that inhibits us in this life. What a wonderful older brother we have to look up to. And he calls us to emanate, to copy that brotherly love that he has given us to one another, to the world around us. Thanks be to God. We move on to the words of the Benedictus. Back to screen share. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And now let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you call us into a deep, personal, warm, loving relationship with you and with one another. Father, we pray indeed for the life and well-being and welfare of the church, our own churches and our own communities, that we may be loving, warm and receptive to enable others to come to discern that same level of relationship into which you invite us of your son, Jesus Christ. So, Lord, bless for our church leaders, bless each and every one of us, especially those of us who are all dedicated within our own to our own churches. Bless us, Lord, in this wonderful, uh, good ministry. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for the world, pray for our communities, pray for our nation, especially this week as we celebrate with our Queen on her Platinum Jubilee. Almighty God, we pray your blessing on our dear Queen Elizabeth II as we share with her the joy and the celebration of her Platinum Jubilee. We pray, Father, your blessing on the days and all the events that are happening up and down this land, in our own communities, our villages, Pray, Lord, that uh, we may be drawn to them, drawn to one another, and celebrate uh, our common theme, our common heritage of celebrating the life and reign and stability of our Queen Elizabeth II. Bless the Queen, dear Lord, as she shares with us in this wonderful time. Continue, Lord, to give her good health, give her strength, give her energy, and bless the members around her of her royal family, as they share in joy and celebration together, uh, marking this, this glorious and wonderful time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. 
And Father God, we pray for the world around us, for the areas that cannot enjoy peace and prosperity and celebration and enjoyment. We think especially, of course, of the country of Ukraine and her people, mindful once again of her citizens, where the mothers and children and the elderly have been brought to the West and their menfolk staying behind to defend their lands. Lord, hold these families together, we pray. May that bond of love which you give to us be there between them at this uncertain time. Bless her, Lord, the land, its government, and help us, Lord, to find ways to bring about peace to this awful, horrific war that has unfolded. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you, dear Lord, your blessing on us as we go into the day ahead. Be with us, dear Lord, in the events and appointments that we are to meet, both those we're looking forward to and those that we might not be quite so looking forward to. Be with those, dear Lord, who will have decisions and results shared today. And be with them, dear Lord, as they work through those results. Think in particular of anything to do with health or well-being or personal welfare. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We bring our thoughts and prayers together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. We pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And so to the collect for today, followed then by the conclusion. We pray, mighty God, by whose grace Elizabeth rejoiced with Mary and greeted her as the mother of our Lord. Look with favour on your lowly servants, that with Mary we may magnify your holy name and rejoice to acclaim her son, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. May the Spirit kindle in us the fire of God's love Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So once again, I pray you will have a successful good day and I look forward to being with you this time next week. Every blessing now. Goodbye.